what we're going to demonstrate here is the student experience in WebEx. So if you're a student and you want to know how WebEx works or what the experience is like, uh, this tutorial is for you. So we're in the Oakland University Moodle course and the majority of you will attend your live WebEx meetings at the date and time that the professor wants you to join. So the first step is to go into your Moodle course and find the link to the WebEx meeting. Once you find the link to the WebEx meeting, go ahead and click on it. And you'll have a link to join the meeting. Now when you click on this, it'll automatically join you to the meeting. Uh, the only way this might not work for you is if, for instance, you have a Chromebook. Now, this browser that I'm clicking on this in on my Windows machine is Google Chrome browser, and this works in Google Chrome, no problem. However, if you have a Chromebook, something with the Chrome operating system, this will not work. Um, so if you are the owner of a Chromebook, they are, they are great machines, but unfortunately you won't be able to join the WebEx session. What you can do, however, is if you have an iPhone or if you have an Android phone or Android uh, tablet or um, Apple tablet, you can go to your web browser and log into Moodle using your mobile device and you can join the meeting uh, using one of those mobile devices. So if you have a Chromebook, I would just use your phone or your tablet to join the meeting. It might ask you to add the WebEx extension to Chrome and when it starts connecting it will open up the WebEx meeting and it will ask you if you want to join the integrated conference here. So do you want to participate? You click yes. And this is the speaker and microphone test. So you want to make sure that your speakers are turned up. You can click on the test. And then here um, my sound bar is not my microphone. I have the life cam microphone so I'm trying so I, now I can see that my microphone is working you want to make, make sure that you select the correct microphone you click OK. Now a lot of times your professor might have you muted as soon as you enter the session but if that's not the case the first thing I do is mute the microphone that way if you have crying babies or barking dogs or you've got a roommate that likes to slam their doors the rest of the class is not hearing your audio So you can mute and unmute your microphone at will. You can also start your video to turn on your webcam. So I can tell that's working as well. Um, the, bigger, the bigger video feed will be the active talker, and then your video feed will always be the smaller one. So I'm going to stop my video and turn that off. If you ever have a question, you can always raise your hand and when you click on the hand raise icon it will put a number next to the hand raise uh, if you're the first person to raise your hand so if maybe five people in the class on this list raise their hand uh, your hand raise will have a number next to it and then to lower your hand you just click on the hand icon again if your professor asks you a yes or no question you can use the green check for yes or the X for no. If your instructor is going too slow or too fast, you can ask your professor to go slower or go faster. Now these are trivial in that sometimes your professor doesn't notice these icons, so just be mindful of that. And then of course you've got the traditional emoticons that you can use. With your mic muted, you can always send messages to the host, and the host is the presenter of the session and if your professor opens it up you can even message everybody and sometimes sometimes asking a question in the chat is less disturbing uh, of the the flow of the lecture than unmuting your microphone and interrupting the lecturing professor so a lot of times your professor might have a preference in how they want the session to work and how interactive it's going to be. Your professor might bring up a whiteboard or maybe bring up an image and want you to point at something. There's an arrow in the upper left corner of the annotation that allows you to click on certain things 
on an image that they might want you to point at. So for example, if they wanted you to point to where you lived, you could point to Oakland County, or if they wanted you to circle uh, Emmett County, you could grab the certain color that you wanted and your pencil, and you can circle Emmett County. These are just some interactive things that your teacher might be asking you to do. Now, if you're asked to do a presentation in WebEx, you might want to share your screen to pull up a PowerPoint. The first thing you'll need to do is ask the host or the, the teacher to pass you the ball. So there's a little ball next to the teacher's name, and if they want you to present, they'll need to drag the ball next to your name. When the ball is next to your name, now you're the presenter. To share your desktop, you'll click on the Quick Start tab, and you can say, Share My Desktop. Now it's likely that the last thing that you clicked on was Join Meeting, so now you're able to maybe go to your Google Drive and find the presentation that you were hoping to present on. So I've got Google Slides thing here, and I can present to my class the same as I would as if we were in a face-to-face -face class. Or if I wanted to pull up anything on the web, I could do that. Once I'm done, I can stop sharing, and I can pass the ball back to the teacher. Of course, while I was presenting, I could unmute my microphone and maybe turn on my webcam and that kind of thing, but you can see it's as simple as passing the ball back and forth and sharing your screen. When the host leaves the training session, it automatically kicks you out of the session. So the teacher needs to be there in order for the session to happen. When they leave, you'll see that the training has ended and you'll have to click OK. After a certain amount of time, if the session was recorded, these links will go away and there'll be a link to actually play the meeting. So the same link that you use to enter the session is the same link that you'll use to play the recording if, if it's recorded. If you ever need help with WebEx, you can click on the Get Help menu and log in. You can click on WebEx on the side here, and WebEx has 24-7 support with an 866 number. That will take you directly to WebEx. If you're using WebEx through Moodle, you should probably call ELIS. However, if you're given an external participant link that also has a password, it would be best to call WebEx.